Hello there and welcome to another Python tutorial. This one is all about how you can create a stock screener on your own. And the reason why I decided to make this video is I noticed that although there are quite some videos on Python and how to build a stock screener on your own, they're all focused on technical analysis. So they're giving the signal if the moving average is above or below certain price, or maybe compared to another moving average, but what if you want to use the fundamental data? What if you want to create a screener that takes into account the balance sheet and income statement on or various lines from the cash flow statement? So that is what this video will be more focused about. And by the end of this video, you won't have the stock screener, but you'll have enough knowledge so that you can build one on your own. And I'll, I'll give a little bit more information why I think that's the best approach. So normally what I do is in my videos I type the code, but I think in this case it's more about explaining how this tool could work and then you can, can build it on your own. In theory there are two ways that you can create a stock screener. The first one is if you are gathering the data from whatever source it is and then filtering them, filtering the companies that don't meet your criteria at that point. So that whatever the output is at the end, it, 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 only, it only shows the companies that meet your criteria. And um, the second approach is the one that I prefer, and that is let's collect all the data first, and then we can filter on based on the, the various criteria. And the reason why I like this approach more is because it offers a lot of flexibility. The criteria that you might want to use at day one will be changing over time. You might want to expand the criteria, you might want to add new ratios, or you might want to remove some as... Maybe you figure out that they don't add that much value. So the second approach is kind of the, the approach that I go for in this video. Now, here's how the, the, the whole script is being structured. And just so you know that you can, of course, make changes uh, as you go. Um, the first thing is, of course, you need to know the tickers. Um, I'm using Yahoo Finance tickers, and it kind of allows me to get the S&P 500 tickers. What you might want to do is, of course, you can also override this and have a list of tickers on your own, maybe Coca-Cola, Tesla, and whatever the other tickers might be. You might also do that. Um, but Yahoo Finance, um, actually, this whole library offers a lot of a lot of optionalities, and I'm using that primarily to extract the data. So the first thing is, of course, we need to get tickers. Whatever is the scope of the companies that you we would like to analyze, that is our first step. Then. Let's take a look at all the variables. And by the way, I'm not um, going. I'm not typing this code, um, so you're not going to be following everything that that I've done. Um, but what I'll do is I'm going to upload this file, and there will be a leave, I'll leave a link in the description so you can download it and make changes on your own. So you don't have to retype all of this unless uh, it, you think it adds value to to basically your learning and journey. So. Once you have the tickers, the next part that I, I, and again, this is the structure that is currently in place. I think it's user friendly and suitable for beginners, but feel free to modify it and just as long as you, you get value from it. So the next part is what are the information that I'd like to get from the script? So, all right, um, I'd like to know the capitalization. So what is the market cap of this, of, of, the, of all of these companies basically that, that I'm screening? And then I'd like to adjust for the cash that they have. I'd like to adjust for the investments and debt. And basically, once I have this, I can calculate the enterprise value. Now, the reason why I decided to just calculate this and show it as an example is if we have two companies that have the exact same earnings. Well, if one of the two has, a, let's say, 10 million more in cash, it would not be surprising if it has a higher capitalization or if it's highly if it's more expensive to buy that one but there's a reason behind that so with this adjustment if we deduct the cash and investments and we add the debt basically we get to the enterprise value of the company and we can use that later on as one of the variables and compare for example the net income to it or maybe the, the EBITDA or whatever it is that you think adds value and again this is um, I just added a few variables just to, to show the process and then you can use this add more variables and, and lead your own stock screener. Now, one of the questions that I oftentimes get is, can I have this in Excel? I'd like to share it with a friend or it's just, I feel more comfortable using Excel for analysis. Perfect. That's what we're going to do. Once we have um, 
all this information. We're going to extract that in a um, an Excel file. And here we might want to add, for example, current ratios. You might want to add that to equity, or you can you can um, divide basically the debt to the capitalization. You can also do that. You can do anything you want um, as long as there's some logic into it and it it makes your process of analyzing and screening companies a bit easier. Right, so this is the first part. Now let's take a look at how do we get the information for all these variables. And I'll start with the market cap. So I have here global capitalization, which basically means I'd like the variable that's outside of this function to come within this function. And I'll explain what this what this all does. But let's start with stats. So what is this stats? And I'm going to run this script, although there is nothing to, to run at the moment. But let's say that we'll, we want to get from Yahoo Finance the stats for Coca-Cola. And let's see what these stats are. So what you'll notice is we get a quite a long list of information. An example, for example, for Coca-Cola, there's there's 50 different rows, and this is a data frame, a pandas data frame for uh, that you can extract for every company. Get the beta, you get some changes regarding the the, the price. Just the price of the company, but also the S&P, moving averages, volume. Uh, below you can get the payout ratio, so the percentage of the net income that's being paid out as dividends. You can get the operating margin, return on assets, and all of this you can extract and include as part of your screener. Now what I've done is, also here you can see the current ratio, the total cash, total debt. I have included some of these in, in the script that I have. But the question is, how, how do we extract this information? I mean, we have a pandas data frame, but what we have currently, let's, let's say the total um, cash. What we have here as total cash is on the 43rd uh, row, starting from zero, so 44th. Um, but if certain company is missing something, it, this might be on, on a different row. So it's not a fixed position. So first we need to figure out where is this line in, in this stats? table and then we can extract this second the the the, next, the last column basically which is the value and when it comes to extracting the value what you'll notice is that we have this b and it's a letter and so they have 12.63 billion in cash and of course we can't divide um this number and if, if it includes a character so we need to convert this into into a number so what i've done here is said, all right, I'd like to get the price. Maybe we can use that later on. I haven't included it in any way here, but if you want, you can. But the reason I get the price is to calculate the market cap. Then let's discover where on which row is the number of shares outstanding. So it's in here, shares outstanding, right? So this is what we need. And it has to include also this five. That is actually the, the total value. So let's Let's take a look and let's figure out on which row it is. Let's start um, and iterate through this through the column attribute. And if if that row is equal to what we're looking for, then let's stop counting. We know where it is. We start with zero, and if we don't find it on the first on on the on row zero, right? Then we increase it by one. So then the question is, all right, is it on row one? If it is, perfect. If not, let's go one row below. Is it here? No, and so on. And the moment that we find it, basically, we stop counting, we stop going down the list, and that is that is the row where we can find the value. And of course, we need to take the exact same row, but look into this value column, right? So that is, right, once we, once we, once we know the row, we need to take the other column, which is the value column, and get, extract that value. But then we need to adjust for the letter. Well, if the last letter is M, it's millions, the, 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 um, the number that we got is in millions, we need to, um, and, and what I'm doing here is I'm converting everything to millions. So I'm, I'm just using everything, all of the values that I'll, I'm extracting will be in millions. So what I'm saying is, in this case, if the number of shares are already in millions, then perfect, leave that as is, but exclude the last character. In this case, it's the character M because we don't really need it. If it's in billions, if we want to convert it to million, we need to multiply it by a thousand. So let's drop the last character 
because it's it's not something that we can use in the calculation, but multiply it by thousand. So in any case, here we get the number of shares in millions. And this is a simple um, if l if statement. And then if we want to calculate the market cap, basically we would be multiplying the, the number of shares with the price that we got up here. Simple as that, we have the market cap. Now, moving forward, let's take a look at how do we get this other information. So what if we want to adjust for cash, investments, debt? Well, we could use the exact same approach to get the cash, total cash and the total debt. The investments, unfortunately, it's not part of this stats table, although it's fairly simple, but we can get that from the balance sheet, right? So let's take a look at what do we get from this column? Of course, the reason why, and I'll explain that in a bit, the reason why I use the balance sheet, but then years yearly equal false is I get the latest quarterly balance sheet. If I want to get the latest annual one, if yearly is equal to true, then I might be missing a few quarters in between. Um, so let's go again with Coca-Cola and let's take a look at this balance sheet. So what do we get here? There's a lot of information and you'll see that it's, uh, of course, it's, it's quarterly. But if you want to calculate any ratio that comes from the balance sheet, you can use this. You can extract all of these values and you can figure that out. So maybe you're looking for other assets, maybe you're looking for cash, whatever that may be. For me, I wanted to get the, the for example, the long-term investments as that's something that I want to, to adjust for. So that's, that's the line that I'm looking for. And what you'll notice is, that, and I have that below. So this is for the, also the same, the same logic for the cash. Here's the, um, the adjustment, or sorry, this is the adjustment for the cash. And here, maybe I should add a comment, in investments as something that I'm, I'm trying to scrape. So what I'm doing is I'm saying, all right, um, let's get the balance sheet, right? For the latest year. So up here, I'm trying to get all the years. So in here, I'm basically accessing that column. And then once I access that column, search for the long-term investments. And that's something that we already saw. And then divided by a thousand, so we have that in millions. Sorry, divided by a million, so we have it in millions. Now, the reason why I'm using here a try and accept is because there might be companies that just don't have any, any investments. And in that case, we want to set it back to zero. We want this to be equal to zero. And you might think, well, what if they have no cash? That's, that's not likely. I mean, every company has a little bit of cash. Debt is something that maybe uh, we can also adjust for, but I think if we take a look at the leases, it's also highly unlikely that that happens. But in, if you run into something like that, then you might want to wrap this into a try and accept uh, as well. So here's a simple calculation. Let's take a look at enterprise value. Let's take the capitalization, subtract the cash and investments and add the debt. Very simple. Um, what if we want to get something from the income statement? And this is something a little bit that can be a little bit more tricky. Um, I'm using the quarterly income statement. Again, for the exact same reason with the balance sheet, we might be missing a few, um, a few quarters. But in this case, um, take a look at this. Let me. What if you take the quarterly income statement for? All right, we started with Coca-Cola. Let's let's keep going. Um, basically, if we extract this, um, what you'll notice is um, we get all of the information that you might want to get, like the operating income or the EBIT or gross profit or whatever that may be. But every column represents the result in the last three months. So in that case, what we need to do is we need to get the columns. And for the first four columns, we need to add them all together. So in this case, if you want to get the net income from continuing operations, well, we need to get that for the four columns, so the first four columns and sum that together. So you can use the income statement, the annual one, then you need one column, but then if there are a few quarters after that, you'll be missing that. So just keep this in mind and you can extract again everything. You can apply that later and filter based on those information. You can do the same for the cash flow statement. I haven't done anything here, but 
whatever that may be. And the reason I didn't want to build it based on my um, preference is I think that that will create some sort of a bias then later on you'll use what I've suggested here. I, I don't want that to be the case. I think that the criteria that I'm using will differ from the ones that you'll be using and that's fine. So there is no need to just have one criteria that fits all. Um, there are a lot of a lot of factors that impact the criteria that we choose. The risk tolerance, maybe one of them. Um, but just keep this in mind that this is one approach that you can use and within these um, different functions you can add anything that you want. And again, the whole process would be when you start, you can add all the variables that you'd like to extract, then import them in the function as part of the global, make the calculation and then that's it. Now the last part is basically what I have named as collect the data. And this global summary is basically the structure that we would like to have in the Excel file at the end when we export it. I'm using Excel, but you know, there, it can be exported in, could be exported in different formats as well. So this is what this last function does. For ticker in ticker, so for every ticker that we have in the list, and if I have here, um, if I leave it like this, basically it would take all the S&P 500 tickers, but it would take a little bit of time. And that's again one of the reasons why I prefer collecting the data and then analyzing. Because if you collect, you figure out, if, sorry, if you use the first approach, you fill the right away, and you notice that something went wrong, then you have to run this again and it will take a lot of time. Well, it, it doesn't matter how long it takes, it takes longer than if you first gathered the data and then apply the filters. So this is what we're going to do. Let's try to get this. Right, so when we get this, then if um, once we once we get this, so try to get these the, the market cap, the balance sheet, the income statement, the cash flow is empty, and then create this new row that we are going to add to the Excel file. So first, we would like to know what is the, the ticker, right? So that we know the market cap. Well, something that we've calculated, the cash debt, the investments, all of this, and then add it to this summary file. Now, once that's the, what once that's done inform us that the, the calculation has been done for that ticker and that's been added to the Excel. However, if that's not the case, then print that something went wrong. And then, of course, once we have run this for all tickers, let's store it as a CSV file and you can have it as an Excel as well. So let's take a look at how this would work. And I'll try to, I think I'll close this. Let's run it and just, just to see how it would work. So we've just, as you see, A added, AAL added. And it takes not that long to get all this information, but it, it takes a little bit of time. And of course, this is for five companies. If we have to run it for 500, then roughly half, 100 times more than that. And this is how it looks. Um, I'll open the Excel file, the summary. It looks something like this. So we get the ticker, we get the market cap, this is in millions, right? We get the, the net income. Now this one you'll notice is not yet in, in millions. So I need to adjust that. And this is not a perfect script. The goal is not again to give you on a silver plate, this is everything that you need. No, this is the approach. Just make use of it. Um, figure out what works for you. I think this is all in millions uh, based, on, based on the formulas. It, it looks good. This is the only one that, for example, I might need to adjust. But of course, there's a lot of things that I'd like to extract. Um, I might make another video at some point with my version of the stock screener and what I think is, um, is information that, that I need. But for now, again, the purpose of this video is to give you the tools and then you can collect all this data. And then afterwards, you can use Pandas and DataFrame to filter based on different criteria. You prefer to use Excel if you're more comfortable using that. Perfectly fine, um, as long as you can extract data. Um, the reason why I have this ticker added and, and something went wrong is if, for example, we, um, let's imagine that we tried to get the net income, but here we misspecified, I say the, uh, the one, one letter is missing, so and there, this is not something that will be found. Right now, if we try to run this, basically, um, we'll get this message that something went wrong. And we'll get that for all because, of course, that's something that's part of the script. So normally what I do is, um, let me, Go back. 
what I'll do is I'll try to run market cap for one company. So let's say we like Coca-Cola. And if I don't get any error, it says, okay, perfect. So that one's working fine. What about this one? What about this one? And at one point, basically you get um, to the part where something went wrong and you need to figure out like here you can see all right there's a key error net income from continuing all of course now we know that it's missing but um what could happen is of course that the way it's structured it's, there's something wrong um or we made a typo and it's a bit of an easier way to to gather that that insight that would be all regarding this tutorial if you have any questions or comments please let me know in the comment section and i'll see you in the next one